of Brookfield. As you can tell, there's something a little bit different about this Sunday morning, and we are ever so grateful to the Still River Ramblers for being here with us and for sharing their amazing talents and wonderful music. So thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Um, as we come into our uh, time of gathering and as we share a few announcements, I would invite our ushers, if you wouldn't mind, to pass along our fellowship pads. If you could sign these and pass them down your rows, that would be great. That way we have an idea of who it is who's here with us in worship this morning. Any other announcements this morning? <laughs> then, friends, we remember how Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Each Communion Sunday, we light our peace candle to unite ourselves with others around the world who are seeking God's peace. So now let us take a few moments to center ourselves and to still ourselves as we prepare for worship while we listen to the tolling of our church bell. Please join me now in our responsive call to worship. May our souls wait for the Lord as we come together in worship. We place our hope in God who offers forgiving grace. People of faith, place your hope in the abundance of God's steadfast love. Let us love generously and well as we have been loved. and prayer of approach that is printed in your bulletins this morning. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and you judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common love, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ binding and covenant, faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the gospel to all the world, and resist the powers of evil, 
to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. and join me up here. I have some stuff I want to share with you, but it would it help if you sit out in front so you can see my visual aids that I've got. I just want to show you this. So, no, no, don't sit up top, because I, I need to be able to see your faces. Can I see your face? Yay! Okay, so does anybody know what holiday we celebrate this week? Fourth of July which is also called Independence Day, right? Yeah? So the 4th of July, or Independence Day, is when we celebrate our nation in a special way, and we set off fireworks, and we cheer, and we wear our red, white, and blue. But the thing that I wasn't sure that you knew was, do you know where our nation is on this globe? Anybody know? North America. North America, that's right. And so we are, Christians here in North America, but do you know what? There are Christians all over the world who are not Americans, and even though they're not Americans, we help them. We have missionaries in places all over the world, and so I brought this so you can see how we are connected. Look at this. Through our offering plate, we are connected to all of these different countries, and so I wanted to tell you a little bit about them. So can you see what this country is here? Can you read the name of that? Is South it? America. Well, it's South America, but the country there. Can you read that purple country? I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's Paraguay. Yeah, Paraguay. Paraguay. Yeah, Paraguay. All right, so Paraguay was right in the middle of South America, and there is a devotional written for us to um, read today by a lady who is a missionary. Her name is Reverend Amelia. And she's an American. She um, is from Puerto Rico, so she probably um, speaks good Spanish. And she's a missionary down here. And she invites our prayers today, especially for the indigenous women and girls that she um, uh, ministers to. Now, I'm betting that you don't know what indigenous means. Do you know what that means? It means they're Native Americans. So they're people very much like our Native Americans who you know, live in the Southwest, or, uh, well, actually some in Connecticut. But there are um, people who are in kind of remote areas, like way up in the mountains and way out in the, in the middle of nowhere who don't have good health care and stuff. And so she's reaching out to them and invites us to pray for them. Then this one over here, do you know what this country? Well, first of all, this continent. You know this continent. I tricked you before because it's like that's South America. This is, which one is that? Africa. And this country down here is? South Africa, because it's at the southernmost point in Africa. Yes? I feel bad for the people who live on the North Sentinel Island because they have no medicine. But I don't know where that is. Nobody even wants to go near them. Where is the it's North right, Sentinel Island? It's in the middle of nowhere. Is it in the, is it in the Pacific? <laughs> it's like near the Caribbean. Oh, wow. Well, that's, that's good to know. I don't know. You'll tell me about that later. Because they but, respect. Oh, they so, don't communicate with the outside world. Yeah, well, because if someone tries to communicate with them, they respond with arrow fire. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Well, so this one here, though, is a city, Cape Town, South Africa. And there's some girls who, uh, um, who have to live on the streets because they're homeless. And so our mission there, 
Um, this lady named Pam runs a mission for women and girls in South Africa, and our offerings here, let's see, what would that be, the blue one? Is that their blue string to South Africa? That connects to them. Does somebody want to hold the blue string? Okay, you hold the blue string. And then who, um, I didn't connect you to the one that's the, the Paraguay. You, you want to hold Paraguay? All right. All right, so then the next one I wanted to tell you about is a mission in this country right here that is so tiny and covered in tape you can't see it. But I'll tell you a hint. Jesus grew up there. Jesus, did Jesus ring a bell? What country did Jesus live in? It still exists today. Israel, ding, 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 yes, you're a winner. So the color for that is green. You, you win my green string. So we're connected to that because there is something called the YWCA in, of Jerusalem that's 150 years old, and it stands for the Young Women's Christian Association, and they work with um, young women and girls who are Palestinians, and they have this cool project called the Fabric of Our Lives, where they make dolls to um, give to um, girls in refugee camps. All right, so that's that. And then this one, what is this country here? Anybody know what that big country is there? India, right, India. So we have a mission in India that this is a picture of a school in India that's for girls. And girls often in India have to drop out of school or they try to get them to marry when they're like teenagers. So this is a school that helps keep girls in school and give them even um, college education. So that was a college class um, in South India, a place called the Lore, I think is the name of it. All right, and then one more. Oh, I got it all tangled up. So does anybody know what this group of island is called? The Philippines. The Philippines, okay, you're a winner. You know your geography. I have a friend from the Philippines. Do you? Well, we have some folks from our church who, go the, who are from the Philippines. Yeah, it's like tomorrow there, isn't it? So it's late, yeah, it's late. Um, so the Philippines has a minister, um, new minister from Ohio who went to a seminary in Chicago, so she's an American. Her name is Lauren, and she works with youth in this little island in the Philippines with a youth theater company that teaches them to be brave and strong and confident and to claim their voices even though they're kind of poor in this little village. So we're gonna pray for all of these, our missionaries, and um, remember that all of our offerings, even these ordinary offerings that we put in the plate, like a, the Church and Society Committee makes sure that those go to those people in the world. So. Will you put your offering ball in this plate and we will pray a prayer of blessing. Yeah, you did have the biggest one. Well, Africa is the biggest continent. Did you know that? There you go. Well, it's one of the bigger ones. No. All right. Let us pray. It's bigger than we are. That's all I'm saying. All right. We thank you, God, for giving us this opportunity to share with the world even as we give thanks for our free nation on this week of celebration, we are aware that there are other of your precious children around the world who are not so fortunate. So we ask that you bless all these offerings that we will give today and all that we can offer with our mission trips, with our uh, public witness, with our voices, with our vote, to the causes and things that you care about, especially your most precious and vulnerable children. So help us to be helpers and to all of our neighbors in need, both here at home and around the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So thank you. You can go off to your church school class. <laughs> Please stand and join us. Stand as you are able and join us in singing the hymn In the Highways in your bulletin.
Holy One, thank you for opening our minds to your spirit of wisdom still speaking to us today. May our hearts also be opened to receive your grace, and may the faithfulness of your forgiving love renew our commitment to love and care for others in your name. Amen. Our first New Testament scripture reading today is from the second letter to, to Corinthians, chapter 8, verse 7, and verses 11 through 15. Paul wrote, Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to, to excel also in this generous undertaking. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their ab abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. Our second New Testament reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5, verses 42 through 47. Jesus said, Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our minds and hearts as we gather to worship you here today May it all be acceptable and even pleasing to you, for you are our strength and our salvation. Amen. Well, I, as I mentioned to the children, this week is the week of July 4th. July is just beginning today, but what you may not know is that June is another holiday week. Uh, another holiday month here at the Congregational Church of Brookfield. It is Pastoral Ministry Evaluation Month <laughs> for the pa for the Personnel Committee and the pa uh, Pastoral Relations Committee. I give you thanks, and I give you thanks if you have ever filled out a, a Pastoral Ministry Evaluation form, because it is useful to get feedback from others about how well we are doing. That said. Any of you who have ever been through a performance evaluation is either a supervisor or the employee knows it may not be everyone's favorite activity. <laughs> kind of like teeth cleaning and that sort of thing. We know it's for our own good, but it doesn't mean we smile and enjoy it for every moment. Well, here's what you may not know. Both of Paul's letters to the Corinthians show us that ministers were being evaluated from the very beginning of the Christian church, probably since the first sermon was preached. I don't know whether you know this or not, but in Acts, we learn that Paul was at the scene of one memorable sermon by Stephen, who was stoned to death the minute he stopped preaching. Now, I'm just here to say that was a very unfortunate ministry evaluation. <laughs> we don't actually know whether Paul, then named Saul, actually threw a stone at poor Stephen, but we do read in Acts 7 that the stone throwers laid their coats at Paul's feet, which most of us think means he was at least a supervisor of the lynch mob in question. 
So this is important that you know this because we read the letters of Paul, the letters of Paul, and we're just barely awake and it's like he's a saint and all that. But what we have to remember is that before Paul became Paul, when he was still Saul, he was a terrible enemy of Christianity. He knew what it was to hate his enemy, those heretics, the new Christian uh, followers of this Jesus guy. They knew, he believed that this heresy could only be stopped under punishment of death. And that's when things changed for Paul. You remember his amazing conversion experience on the Damascus Road where he was struck blind by a, you know, a great blinding flash. And then he was sent to the home of Ananias, a Christian, where he was healed. Now imagine this from Ananias' perspective, of course. You know, you're, uh, he, the Lord spoke to Ananias too and said, you know, Ananias, I got this mission for you. I want you to be a working for me. <laughs> And he said, I want you to heal this guy, Paul, and, you know, give him back his sight. You know, you can just imagine him on this little phone call to Jesus. Uh, excuse me, Lord, I didn't catch the name. Did you say Saul? This is the guy? So Ananias did what he was told. He opened up his home to his worst enemy, put his whole family in danger, perhaps, and healed, gave Paul back his sight, and the rest, my friends, is history. Paul became Saint Paul. He had experienced this amazing eye-opening insight from which we get those words from amazing grace. I was blind, but now I see. The world looked different to him from that moment on, and he couldn't keep quiet. He couldn't shut up about it. And you see, that gets preachers in trouble. Preaching the gospel. It's interesting that today's scripture, reader, scripture reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians was essentially written as a response to a negative performance evaluation by the church he had planted in Corinth. It was criticism for, um, he was responding to criticism that he had received for a previous sermon that he had sent to them in a letter. Now, if you're wondering, okay, it's 2 Corinthians, that must be 1 Corinthians, you would be wrong. Because there are actually four Corinthian letters, we believe. And this is what I love. As a writer who's thrown away some first drafts before, <laughs> turns out the first letter to the Corinthians does not exist because Paul calls it a warning letter and he fired it off in such anger, like some of us who've hit send a little too soon. <laughs> So he fires it off to them and gets them so mad that they destroyed it and it does not exist today. So he wrote 2 Corinthians, which contains these words that are so familiar to many of us that I think was an appropriate sermon for Paul to preach to himself as he had been hot-hatted and angry. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels but have not love, I am but a clanging gong or a noisy cymbal. Right? So Paul corrected his mistake. But we're preaching from 2 Corinthians today. So guess what? There was a third letter. He calls it the letter of tears. And we don't know who it made cry, you know, whether it made the recipients cry or it made the recipients so angry they destroyed it because it doesn't exist and made Paul cry. But in any case, he had to try again. So 2 Corinthians was his fourth try. And he took this tack. He apologized once again to the Corinthian church, but he still called them into account for judging him. Very interesting. He not only did that, you talk about chutzpah, it was a fundraising letter. Because evidently, Paul was um, not receiving the donations to his ministry that he had been hoping for. Remember, Paul planted all these churches all over everywhere, in Galatia, in Ephesus, in Macedonia, in Philippi, in Rome. He was taking up collections from all of these local churches for world mission, just like we do today. And people were responding, much like often donors do today. They say, well, we've got needs here at home, don't you know? And what do we get from our giving to the wider church? So Paul 
makes his case. And that is today's sermon. Paul calls upon them to notice something. He appeals to them in the name of God for God's fair balance. And by that he means a fair balance between evaluation of him and his ministry and evaluation of the church and their ministry. He also calls on them to excel in generosity, not for his own sake, but for the sake of others. These churches around the world that many of uh, the ancient world, which were suffering much greater persecution than they were suffering in Corinth. He tells them he doesn't want them to bankrupt their local church, but to think also of the hardship and sacrifices made by other Christians, including those that were in Jerusalem that Peter was leading. So Paul is inviting them and inviting us to share in the pleasure, the very real pleasure of seeing Christianity take root and to grow, grow strong in new places around the world. It's fun, like the kids got to experience, to know that there are these other ministries and missions that we are connected to around the globe. I told you a story last week um, that ended with me, um, I said the story wasn't significant, that's because I was saving it till now. But um, where I couldn't, I was telling Jen this story about something that happened on a mountaintop in Rio. Do you know that mountaintop where Jesus, the crucifix, stands at the top with the arms out like this? Well, the story last week was I couldn't remember the name of that guy who stood up there on the mountaintop because I was kind of tired. All right. It's Jesus, just so you know. But the story was my father was going there as a missionary, a delegate to the World Council of Churches, and he had just been led on a tour of the slums of Rio de Janeiro, where our United Church missionaries have missions to help the poor children in the slums. And he was being led by a minister from the United States, a Methodist, who um, had been their tour guide. And they finally got to the mountaintop, and it was a large group of delegates, but my dad and this man stood side by side on this mountaintop, looking out and admiring the view. And the missionary says, you know, I just always love these mountaintop places because it so reminds me of the hills of home. Say what, says my father, who happens to be from Appalachia. <laughs> he says, yeah, I grew up in this little town near the Cumberland Gap in the eastern hills of Kentucky. And my dad goes, really now? And what would the name of that town be? And he says, Middlesboro, you probably don't know it. I grew up Baptist in this Southern Baptist church there, but now I'm a Methodist. And my dad says, well, that's very interesting. I was baptized in the Southern Baptist church in Middlesboro, Kentucky as well. So this is the world of our mission. We are connected. They went literally to the ends of the earth and found somebody from the same small town. Because this same gospel that I have preached to you today was preached in their little Southern Baptist church. I had to share that with you on Bluegrass Sunday. <laughs> because, you know, my joke is, that's the music of my people. And I came as a missionary to you Yankees, bless your heart. But you can't make this stuff up. Paul calls us to be in covenant with all people, all nations, people with whom we disagree. If you may remember, we fought a little war, my ancestors, with yours. <laughs> we fought it, and we have reunited. The United Church of Christ was one of the first. I mean, the Congregationalists in the South never split off. You know, the American Baptists and the Southern Baptists, they split because of slavery. We were in the South a minority standing up against injustice. And we are still called to do that. And Paul tells us we can do it with courage and with love. That we can bear witness and speak up to about people around the world for whom we have concerns, people in our own country for whom we have concerns, and we can speak that truth to one another with love and with amazing grace. For we have all been wrong, 
and together through the grace of Christ, we can know what it is to live in the righteousness of the God who calls us and forgives us. Thanks be to God for this good news. Amen. Please join us in the preparation for prayer that's printed in your bulletin. today, inviting you to keep those people in your thoughts and prayers. They are all there for reason of concern. Um, as is the case, uh, we generally have other prayers to add, and today is no different. As we look out into our nation and into our world, we want to be in prayer for the victims, the families, and the community affected by the shooting at the Capitol Gazette in Maryland this past Thursday. Um, and as we think about that, Bryn mentioned that when she was in journalism, she actually had threats um, that were written and, and shared against her, too. And so we want to be thinking about all of those who um, work so hard to try and get um, information out to us about what is happening around the world, too. Um, prayers for our world leaders and all those working for positive change and peace, both here in the United States and around the world. Um, and special prayers today for those who are working to reunite children safely with their families um, at the southern border of our United States. Um, we are grateful as we look ahead to the 4th of July this week for all of those who have served, for all of those who continue to serve and who help us to protect um, the freedoms that we oftentimes take for granted but know are so very important um, here in the United States. And we are in prayer today for all of our mission partners. Um, for all of those around the world, and especially, uh, as Bryn mentioned, um, we have been called today in particular to pray for those ministries that serve um, vulnerable girls and women around the world, um, and especially as there's been more coming to light about human trafficking, all of those who are caught in that awful system um, as well. As we look a little bit more closely at the prayers of our uh, gathered community here, a little bit more close to home, we are in prayer for all of those families who are grieving the loss of loved ones this spring. Um, we have a number of people who spent time either at services or spoke even at memorial services for friends this past week, and so we want to be wrapping those people in our thoughts and prayers. Um, that was a lot of concern, and we have some joy as well today. So we pray for all of the kids and teachers who finally finished a year of school. <laughs> that, that seemed to go on for a very, very long time. And so prayers for, for all of you who now have a very short summer to recoup from a year of school. Um, and once again, thank you, thank you, thank you, Still River Ramblers, for sharing your great talents with us this morning. So. And I know um, you guys come, thoughts, prayers, people, situations on your hearts too. So for whom else shall we be in prayer this day? Yeah. For Taylor. Prayers for Taylor today. Yeah. Other names or thoughts to be lifted up in prayer today, friends? Then let us join our hearts and our souls in the spirit of prayer. God, as we gather here in this place, as we walk here every Sunday morning into through these doors, we realize that this is what it means to be able to worship and to praise you and to offer our prayers in freedom. And for that, we are ever so grateful. We are so grateful that we are able to come here and that we are able to join with one another. And we realize that that is a hard fought and hard won battle. And so we are grateful for all of those who have served in order to make this a possibility for us. And all of those who have worked so hard to spread your gospel message of love and acceptance and forgiveness. God, as we gather here and as we gather our prayers, we realize that there is much that is lying on our hearts today. That we are coming from all different places, all different walks of life. And as we gather, we are coming with all different emotions. And so we pray that you hear all of these names that we have lifted up today. 
that you surround those whom we have lifted up for reason of concern with your healing, with your grace, your love, your guidance, with your peace. And God, as we celebrate so many wonderful joys, we give you thanks for those moments when love and light shine a little bit brighter into our lives. So we thank you for anniversaries and graduations and opportunities to celebrate one with another. God, we thank you most especially for your amazing grace that offers us forgiveness and gives us an opportunity to try again and again. And as we do that, we pray that you would help us to hear your truth and your guidance that you would help us to evaluate our own faith and our own lives before we pass judgment on others, that you would help us to follow the example of Jesus Christ, to know that fair balance, to see those in need and assist, to offer strength for those who are struggling, to realize the joy in giving, to reach out to the places that are broken and in need of healing because there are so many in our world. And so, God, we are bold to pray for your guidance for our world leaders and to pray for those who are seeking reunion, for those who are seeking peace, and to help us look beyond guns and bombs to solve all of our issues. God, as we gather today, we give you thanks for your abundant and liberating love, and we pray that you would help us to share that liberating and abundant love with all of those whom we encounter whether in this place, but most especially beyond the walls of this place as well. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of the reasons I love my church is that we have Bluegrass Communion Sunday. In my weakness as a servant of Christ, I one time said at the 8.30 service, there has to be a better guitarist, guitarist out there than I. <laughs> and Lori Meadow came forward, and later Paul Finnick, and after that, the whole Still River Ramblers, because I, in my weakness, I said, y'all gotta do better than this. <laughs> so it is my, it's such a joy that they are giving back um, to the ministry of our church with this Sunday, and that you all didn't need to hear that sermon I preached today because you are cheerful givers and you love more than anything to help those beyond these walls. So let us give to this morning's offering with joyful hearts.
join me now in our offertory prayer. God of love and peace, you have blessed us with so much. Fill our hearts and minds with your love and inspire us to contribute to the flourishing of all peoples and nations. Please use these gifts and offerings to support Christ's mission of hope to the world. Amen. So I'll invite you to join in singing our communion hymn, the first three verses on your insert, and then we'll sing the last three verses as the closing hymn. journey, you are welcome here, not just within these walls, but at this table of grace. And so we invite you all to join us at this table to know the presence of the risen Christ and the sharing of this life-giving bread and cup. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you have given your life to us through your son, Jesus Christ, and through the outpouring of that Holy Spirit into this world, we consecrate these gifts. We ask for your blessing on this grain, this cup. We pray that these simple gifts may become more than what we are, even as you call us to become more than what we are. We know that your Spirit is powerful and can transform us. We pray that in this sharing of this meal, you will transform our hearts and make us more faithful servants to you out in the world. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, friends, as we accept the invitation and as we gather at this table of grace once again, we remember how Jesus, on that last night of his life, sat at the table with his disciples. And as they gathered together, he took bread. And giving thanks, he blessed it, and he broke it, and he offered it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do so, in remembrance of me. And so now, ministering to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we offer you the bread of life. Oh 
Let us share together the bread of life. We remember also how after the meal, Jesus took the cup and he offered it to them saying, this cup is a new covenant for you poured out in my blood. Each time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. And so now, ministering to you in the name of Jesus Christ, we offer you the cup of blessing. now in our prayer of thanksgiving. Holy One, you have blessed our lives with the outpouring of your amazing grace and steadfast love. For all the good gifts you have invited us to enjoy, we are ever thankful. May this holy meal nourish our souls, strengthen our faith, and unite us with other faithful disciples around the world. Help us to walk in the way of your Son, Jesus, the Prince of Peace both as individuals and as a nation. Amen. 
Please join us in the closing hymn that's printed in your bulletin, verses 4 through 6 of I'm Gonna Live So God Can Use Me. refreshments, but before that, we have been so richly blessed by the peace of Christ, and now let us share a sign of that peace with one another and bring those signs of peace out into the world as well. The peace of Christ be with you all.
thank one of our sponsors at WWOZ in New, in New Orleans, Louisiana. 90.7 FM. I'm G. Rockwell. And we're, we're the Silver Ramblers. Ramblers. From the great Bluegrass State of Connecticut. Oh, my God. 